together and bring everyone up to speed on the issues that are being presented regarding PDAs in Strawberry right now. Um, specifically, how this is going to set in motion an aggressive um, set of parameters for growth in Strawberry. Um, you will hear from individuals who have been researching some specific topics. I'm sorry, can you not hear me? Yes, can you just tell me who you are and, and who you represent? Are you a, a neighbor? My name is Julie Brown. I live in Strawberry. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, I am. I represent no one. I'm really one of you. And are you just all, taking this upon yourself? Yes. Okay. For all of us who have been you. reading all many things going on, are we going to have a meeting? Are we going to come yeah, together? Thank you. We're really just two people who have been talking, who have been doing some research, <laughs> who have taken it upon ourselves to say, let's try to create the broadest umbrella group that can address the specific issues of PDAs. This is a grassroots movement. <coughs> Stacy is a working mom with young children. I am a working mom with young children. We apologize in advance for all the lack of notice, for all the unprofessionalism, for all the lack of professional organization, et cetera, et cetera, of which there will be a long list. But we graciously thank you for your patience and your tenacity and your care for this community, which we all love. And I think that's what unites us. And we also respect every single person here. This is not an effort in any way to prevent anyone from speaking out on their opinion. It's really about, about finding a collective voice about this issue that we can then move forward into action. Um, there's a handout of, there's two handouts. Um, the glossary terms um, are a list of definitions that you're going to hear over and over again. We've taken the time to go to the government websites, even the websites that are created by the individuals who use these terms and copied these terms so that you can start to put together a broad understanding. And we understand that no one, myself included, is going to understand the nuts and bolts of this issue. The goal is that collectively we can come together, break into teams, and start to create a working coalition that can look more closely at these issues. So the glossaries um, and the terms were taken from websites. The websites are also listed. Um, I think it's important just to do a brief introduction of what these organizations are. Um, the organizations that are involved, the PDA is way down here. These are very large organizations. They're governmental groups. They are formed with purpose. Um, not a, there's not a sinister purpose. It's a, it's a, a goal to try and direct some of the issues that are facing uh, California at large and specifically the Bay Area. Uh, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, the MTC, um, is in charge of transportation planning, financing, and coordinating the agency, the agency for nine counties in the San Francisco Bay Area. This is a big, big organization. It's a big group. ABAG is the Association of Bay Area Governments. It includes nine counties and 101 cities. So it kind of lets you know how big this machine is out of because when people cite these terms and who these groups are you should know that they don't know you individually they don't have a sinister plan necessarily get strawberry but they are setting in motion and they are moving through with programs that are going to directly impact us if they reach fruition um, these two entities have joined together and have formed one bay area and um, this is an organization that is looking to combine a lot of initiatives. And one of the big things that they have been working on is what is Plan Bay Area. And Plan Bay Area, Stacy, if you want to <laughs> hold up your copy of Plan Bay well, Area. This is just the ma main document there. It's 166 pages, but there are also a number of other. I don't know if anybody's read it yet or looked through it. <laughs> memorized it. Yes, exactly. We'll be asking you first some support. Um, that there's a lot of supplemental material too that go through. And the other thing is, is this goes hand in hand with the Senate Bill 375, which has been around for a you know since 2008. But the Senate bill has also dictates in it that overlap in there. So there's policy in here, there's implement things and implement and development things in here, but then it also corresponds directly with Senate Bill 375. So we'll be referring to both of those a little too. And if you're following in the paper and the news, I'm sure you're seeing reference to all of, all of that as well. 
So as you start to see, these are big government groups. It takes them a very long time to do things. So when people say, oh, the PDA has been around since 2007. Yeah. Yes, it has been. But these are big groups that are moving through policies. The policy is changing. The laws are changing. Government officials are saying, let's add that, let's add this. There are things happening behind closed doors. There are things happening in broad daylight. And for most of you who are going to work, raising children, trying to plan for your retirement, you're just not tuned in. And so, first of all, no one should feel bad for not knowing all of this. <coughs> we just have to get ourselves together and we have to move forward quickly. Um, the, out of the Plan Bay Area Initiative, they have created a group called FOCUS. And this is a program for creating these, for helping to implement these different initiatives. And one of the big initiatives that FOCUS is create, charged with creating is a PDA, which is a priority development area. Any questions so far? <laughs> Okay. I'm going to hand this over to Stacy and let her talk, because that's my, my goal is to make you all feel welcome and happy before she gives you a lawyer speech. <laughs> it's not lawyer speech. We're just, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. So I just have a question. Is there anyone from the county here tonight? I don't know. Is anyone from the county here tonight? We, well, I, I sent um, um, our supervisor, Catherine Sears, I sent her uh, a request, and John Eller, who is on the planning commission? Um, are you John Miller? Hi. So you're from the county? Uh, I'm here as a Senior. Strawberry resident okay. tonight, and not okay. as a planning commission. Okay. So, um, but I don't, I don't know. We, we were, we we're trying to just kind of get basic information out about like what the priority development areas are and stuff like that. We, we didn't invite them as this is necessary. I mean, we weren't intending this to be a forum for debating with them. It's really a forum for you and for our community to get up to speed because they have a better understanding of all of this. And when they start talking, it's very easy to feel like, oh, they know more than I do. So really, this is about everybody who's here. And I'm going to introduce my friend Stacy Simonton. Hello. Um, part of this, actually, when Julie and I have been talking along with, I mean, with a number of uh, people on different issues and areas, um, we did get that the flyer from, from our supervisors, Sears, last Friday. Did, did anybody get the flyer, the email flyer, and read through it? So there were things, too, that we wanted to address um, you know, because the definition where it says what are priority de development areas, you know, that's kind of a quick a segue into transportation funding that is somewhat related. But we wanted to kind of take a step back and say, no, really, what is a priority development area? And on one of the handouts, there's a quick definition, and this is the definition that is on the website for the focus for it's if you're going to Grand Bay Area, One Bay Area, the government agencies. Focus is the is the program that Julie just mentioned that is in charge of PDAs. They decide if you're going to apply, here are the application <coughs> criteria, here's what you do, here's the definition. We have some of that material in here for you, and or that I'm going to kind of go over quickly to give an overview about it so we really know what a priority development area is. What it's defined as is locally designated areas with an existing community that have been identified and approved by local cities or counties for future growth. These areas are typically accessible to transit, job, shopping, and other services. Um, they say that over 70 local governments have voluntarily designated some 170 PDAs, which are proposed to absorb about 80% of new housing and over 60% of new jobs on less than 5% of the Bay Area's land. The result is a locally supported, compact, and efficient growth pattern that meets CARB's GHG reduction targets and provides adequate housing for the Bay Area's growing population. So this that I just read to you and also that I cited from you is from One Bay Area. It's frequently asked questions. It's in that section, what is it? So we wanted to start off there. The second thing that we thought would be incredibly interesting is to say, how do you, number one, how do you get to be, how are PABAs created? And that is also on the same website, like I said, that does all of the application process. The designation criteria. Let me, let me back up actually a second, because the PDAs, there are two phases of PDAs. There's a potential PDA, which is what Strawberry is designated as now. And then there's a planned PDA where it's official and it's game on. We're right now in the potential phase. 
And the reason, I believe one of the big reasons for that is what I've read, was that we don't have the zoning and all of the density requirements that are required yet. As soon as that passes, or if that passes, and I think there's zoning up for review by the Board of Supervisors in September on the housing element, um, then it, the, 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 this PDA, Strawberry, would move into, potentially into a, the planned PDA status. So that, there is a timing issue because these things have all passed through the planning commission and now they're going to be at the Board of Supervisor um, level in September. I think September 12th is what I've heard is they're going to be the meeting on that, but I haven't seen, I don't the agendas haven't come out yet. So, um, so in general though, so the, those, those, those categories, the potential and planned categories, so they relate also to funding. And a planned area is eligible for some capital infrastructure funds, planning grants, and technical assistance. You know, the transportation money application that um, we've seen in the paper, we've seen in um, Supervisor's Year Circular that they would like to get is when you're a planned PDA, when you've already got the zoning in place to be high density, when you have all of these things that have already happened, that's when the governments can apply for grants for certain transportation. They're not entitled and they're not guaranteed them. The grant process is through another, I guess we didn't define this one, but one Bay Area grant is OBOG. And so OBOG has a, a whole system of how you can apply for certain transportation grants. We're going to stay away from a lot of the transportation grants because, you know, it's, it's, this is for things I think Supervisor Sears talked about. Maybe the the Tiburon Y might be improved if we're if we're a PDA if we go into that next level of zoning, or maybe some sidewalks and things like that. Um, but it's a complex process, and a lot of people who have been writing in the newspaper lately have been kind of talking about how it's not guaranteed. It's a very small amount of money commensurate with the cost of having high development or high density housing that's clustered into one, any one area. So, um, so if you're a potential area, you're a potential PDA, you're eligible for planning grants, which are you know, very small amounts of money comparatively, and technical assistance, but not any capital infrastructure funds and not anything else. So, um, so like I just mentioned, if the current, if, if the current plans of our, of our 2007 Marin Countywide plan is changed, which is slated to be changed, I think, if it's approved on in September, then a lot of these things are going to potentially change as far as our status goes. Um, is, is Bruce here? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Bruce. Bruce, hi Bruce. Hi. Are you still going to talk a little bit about zoning? I hadn't planned to, but I'd be happy to, I, I think. Yeah. Bruce Perkins, our resident, he has uh, been, how long have you lived in Strawberry? Is it 35 years? 36 years. 36 years. He knows very, I mean, a, a tremendous amount about all the zoning and impacts and the overlays and the density requirements. And, um, you know, I started looking into all of these things and got in, but it was over my head. So we, again, kind of focused just back on the PDA. But I wanted to, I wanted to read to you, again, the designation criteria for moving into a planned PDA status. And this is, again, from the FOCUS website from the, the governing body. Okay. So, there's three things you have to have. It has to be an area within an existing community. The area must be near existing or planned fixed track transit or served by comparable bus service. And the area is planned or is planning for more housing. They then give definitions because that sounds pretty simple and okay, anybody could kind of fit within that category, but there's more to it. What they mean by area means that the planning area being proposed for designation as a priority development area under the, um, I'm sorry, is a recommended area size is 100 acres, which is approximately a quarter mile radius. Um, the existing community means that the area is in, within an existing urbanized area, lies within an urban growth boundary or limit line if one is established, and has existing or planned infrastructure to support development that will provide or connect to a range of services and amenities that meet the daily needs of residents making non-motorized modes of transportation option. And then housing definition means that the area has plans for a significant increase in housing units to a minimum density of the selected place type, which in our area is 30, acre, 30 units per acre, including affordable units, which can also be part of mixed-use development that provide other daily services. And then the near transit means that the area has 
The area is around an existing rail station or ferry ter terminal a half a mile around. It's served by a bus or a bus rapid transit corridor with minimum headways of 20 minutes during peak weekday commute periods and this area is defined as a planned transit station by MTC's resolution. So that is when we talk about that we're talking about what kind of housing growth is planned here. It is significant and a significant increase in housing with these minimum density levels. Um, I think, um, just to add, the words that are repeated in every single location are dense, compact, high capacity. These are not um, the types of housing that you see currently now. We have multifamily housing, we have, but these are broad swaths of very dense, compact housing. <laughs> and, and we talked about what the area is. I'm just going to jump to it because I, I saw this, um, you know, it's only a half a mile off of the 101. It's not going to impact any neighborhood. And, and Julie and I were talking and she said, a half a mile, let's count that. I mean, and she, here's the map. This is the map of what part is in the, what's in the yellow lines here is within the priority, is within the PDA. And it's, it's true, it's in within a half a mile. I mean, we're in this zone here as far as all these, these um, areas are concerned. The other thing is on the housing element, there have been a number of sites, um, different graphs, where you know, a number of um, areas right along the Strawberry Village up through here are all you know, potential sites for high density housing. Um, I think there were 21 acres that were, 20.97 acres that were on the kind of slot to be looked at as this. So that's what we were kind of trying to see is like, well, this is, there's a lot of housing needs that are placed on, on unincorporated Marin right now. Where would all that fit in Strawberry? And, you know, I think that's the kind of, we don't have the answer to that, but, you know, and I don't know that anybody has the answer to that right now. And our concern is, you know, every, we're one of the last, PDAs or potential PDAs in Marin right now. There's a small one in San Rafael in the downtown area that's already a planned PDA. Um, and then there's this corridor right now, the 101 urbanized corridor between Marin City and Strawberry now that's left. And so, you know, I think there are so many things that are coming from these, you know, big regional governments that have, you know, carrots and sticks that are saying our policy is very clear that we want to focus growth here and we want it to be high and we want it to be compact and we want it to be right near transit and you know our zoning right now doesn't do that but I don't know if that's going to change or to what extent that might change when the housing element is approved or, or if it's voted on in, in a couple weeks. Um, there's a question that, you know, I mean, I've, I've been saying, and I, I've researched it, so I hope I'm right, but um, that we can get out, this is a voluntary process. Now, in 2007, I'm sorry. I just wanted to add, if anyone is interested in seeing what a PDA development area is, there is one over in Richmond. And if you go out to Harbor and up to McDougal, as a matter of fact, you can even Google it and uh, see it in three, almost three dimensions. And it's very, very, very different from anything you'd see in, in a county that has been characterized as exceptional. You know, I think it was uh, uh, Miss Arnold, Judy Arnold, uh, supervisor, said she thought that Marin was exceptional among the various Bay Area communities. And I, I'd say it's closer, this area that I'm talking about in Richmond is closer to something like uh, Marin City. Well, and I also think that it's relevant to, to state that, again, we get back to the larger picture. PDAs are not, were not developed with us in mind. PDAs are a regional answer to a very large moving uh, issue of housing and transportation and how you bring these things together. And I think what is concerning us is that this is not the solution for Marin County. If you look at the, a, the ABAG website and you look at the types of maps that are on this website, they really do look at how dense is the housing, how dense is the population, what is the population growth trajectory, what is the jobs growth trajectory. And if you look at the, really the region, our quarter is 
so suppressed. We don't have the population growth. We don't have the jobs growth. Um, and all of our things are fairly stable. And a lot of this, a lot of this terminology, a lot of these tools, you can see that would be very effective for high growth areas that have high density housing, that have that are all